Today we're delivering Eugene's truck back to him. Uh, Eugene brought us this vehicle. It's a Gladiator with a 3.6 engine. And he already had on here the rear bumper, the side steps from Rock Slide Engineering, the light bar and bracket, and then he also had this front bumper and winch on. So he brought us a whole trailer full of parts for this truck, and that included the Curry Anti Rock front sway bar, the Rock Crawler long arm coil over conversion front, coil sprung rear kit, it's four link front three link rear with a set of Spicer Ultimate Dana 60s. They have 538 gearing and electric lockers in them. This is a 42 1350 20 Nitto trail grappler on the 20 by 10 KMC grenade crawl bead locks. Very sharp rig. You can see on here, it's got the whole package from Steer Smarts, their track bar, tie rod, and drag link on the front. Again, Curry Any Rock Sway Bar. This one came with coilovers, hydraulic bump stops. Um, he does need, and you'll see it later here in the video, he does need four inches of bump stop here on the pad for the axle side, which he's gonna do when he gets home. We also did a fender chop on this vehicle. It's not a Rubicon, so it's a sport with a little bit lower fender on it. So what we did was removed all the plastic uh, additional parts skirting that goes around. He's gonna go back and add the bracket that goes up here on the front section. And he also has some Artec inner fenders and turn signals and all that stuff for it. So he's gonna do that once he gets it home. But man, this thing is a beast. I'll get in and around and just show you what all we've done. Uh, it does have a functioning parking brake with that cable kit. The long arm brackets fit nice and flush with the frame. On the rear here, you can see the extended brake lines as well as the longer sway bar end links. The Yeti track bar rock crawler truss for the three link and then up here above that you can see where the three link bar goes to the center of cross member on the front up there this is a four and a half inch kit but in that kit they integrate this coil correction wedge and spacer for the rear coil springs you can see here the e-locker has not been connected the customer has a switch system and harnesses he's going to wire all that up when he gets the vehicle home we did remove the spare tire and all the mechanism that was hanging down on the spare tire here is another shot of the three link mount for the rear axle and that third upper link everything is adjustable but it does weld on so right here you can see where that upper link mount is welded onto the frame cross member there. We also removed the factory upper control arm mounts from the axle. You can see that capped plate there on each side just so it doesn't look like something's missing. Just kind of finish that off drive shafts are both Adams drive shafts now the rear one you'll notice is kind of funny we've got an Adams rear section and then a Knoxville drive line front section so when he ordered this kit he ordered it with a one-piece rear drive shaft and what we had was contact here in this mount for the carrier bearing which we didn't know about uh, was gonna be an issue. So the drive shaft right here when it came down was contacting 
this when you hit a slight bump. So we had to contact Adam over at Knoxville Driveline and he cut down this rear section from Adam's and then put the carrier bearing two piece kit on here. And then we got uh, the front section to work just well. Now, another thing that we did have an issue with was when we bolted this up, the flange on this output was contacting this drop down bracket for the carrier bearing. And you can see there the gap we have now is very small. And that's because we had to make this quarter inch shim for the carrier bearing to drop it down just a little bit further. This is the Adams 1350 front drive shaft that worked well. And we've got the four link long arm here that comes with this subframe piece that connects one side to the other. Of course, those brackets are welded to the frame on each end, everything's adjustable again. And then since this is not a bolt-in application for this front axle, uh, with this coilover setup, we had to get different brackets for the bottom here. Uh, this bracket is different. That's actually made for the UD60s. Uh, so we had to get those from Rock Crawler. This thing has gobs of ground clearance with these 42 inch tires. You can see here the 1350 CV yoke for the front of the transfer case. And then moving around to the back of the transfer case, it has a flange. Customer had already installed the spare tire in the bed of the truck and actually think it doesn't have any air in it right now. It looks kind of funny, but you can see how, how it's coned in there. It's actually flat right now. This Jeep has Oracle tail lights that the customer installed such a menacing stance there beautiful rig he's got some plans to go out to colorado here in the spring i believe and uh, do some high mountain passes and overlanding with this thing and it's mostly going to be running around town i believe just looking slick he and his wife have multiple jeeps and all kinds of cool toys but this one is just one bad machine. We did do a battery auxiliary delete on this vehicle and then also installed a taser as well to correct all of the tire pressure, tire size, gear ratio things. Let's take a look here at how this coilover mount attaches attaches to the top of the factory spring bucket and then bridges over here and then attaches down here on the frame. We've got his ride height dialed in pretty good. It's sitting nice and level. And then of course the slider stops are where they need to be. And like again, um, he's gonna be doing the inner fenders once he gets home, as well as that fender bracket to stiffen up the structure of that factory outer fender. You can see here, this thing really does twist up and we've got the clearances dialed in. He's got four inches of bump stop to add on the front uh, to correct that in the front and on the rear. He still has a small amount of up travel left on the shock, but at full bump, the tire barely contacts this fender. So should should work out just fine. And yeah, it's it's an awesome rig. We thank him for bringing it to us. Follow, like, subscribe our channel for more content. We appreciate you watching.